The premier stand-up combat league held its biggest show of the year in the Johan Cruyff Arena in the heart of Amsterdam for Glory 59. It was a night of knockouts, rivalries, rematches, and title fights, led by heavyweight champion Rico Verhoeven looking to defend for the eighth time against second-ranked Guto Innocent. Plus, Robin Van Roosmullen taking on Pet Panamroon Kiat Mukau for the unification of the featherweight belt. Also featured, heavyweights Jamal Ben Sadiq taking on D'Angelo Marshall, light heavyweights Michael Dude and Morad Bouzidi, and in the much-talked-about welterweight clash, Mertel Grunhardt going up against young, brash newcomer Mohamed Jiraiya. Don't go anywhere. It's Glory 59 Rewind, and it starts right now. We start in the welterweight division, where hometown favorite and former champion Mertel Grunhardt came with guns blazing against the promising up-and-comer, Mohamed Jaraya. They do not like Paul. And there's Badr Hari, ladies and gentlemen, in the crowd, witnessing his fellow Moroccan square off against Myrtle Grunhardt, scheduled for three rounds. Not a lot of people expected to go that far. No, I just adjusted my seat because I'm expecting to jump up. Well, let's see the pressure that Jiraiya is going to bring. You got to expect Myrtle to try to use his knees versus that forward pressure. Oh boy, Jiraiya almost hit him behind the head. Nice job by him to slow up that right hand. You got to give Jiraiya a lot of credit coming into glory really quickly and wanting to take the best in the division. And he took Myrtle on his second fight. Not only that, but he's moved up a weight class, Joe. A lot of people think that Jiraiya should be fighting at a lower weight. Yeah, that's what Myrtle was saying, that he's not a real welterweight. So let's see the power that Jiraiya's gonna have tonight. Oh, that left hand connected as Myrtle was trying to regain his balance. There. Yeah, Myrtle comes in with these flying knees where Jiraiya's pivoting off and then trying to counter with his punches. Ever since the Nikki Holskin fights, fight. Myrtle Grunhardt's been looking for a new rival. Maybe this is him. Maybe it's Jiraiya. Good left hand on the way in. I also like Jiraiya's low kicks as well. Danny Debris. Who runs Team Coliseum out of Utrecht? They got a brand new, beautiful gym. He says, "Listen, I can't control Jiraiya." Oh, and a right hand is that a knockdown? Paul Nichols says, "No, it was close." One, two, and it is a knockdown. Three, four, five, six. I'm not too sure what happened there. Eight. He first showed that it wasn't. So now Jiraiya with everything to do here. Paul Nichols thought about it for a little while. We don't usually see him do that. What? You can see that Virgil Grunhardt's putting everything he's got to each of these punches. Yeah, he's going for the knockout, especially with his knees and the way he's throwing his punches. Go. Fight! You gotta give Jiraiya credit. He's been stepping forward. Going right after the bigger go. and more experienced Myrtle Grunhardt. Fight! Yeah, especially now with that controversial knockdown, extra pressure on Jiraiya to, to come forward. Break! Fight! Grunhardt is soaking wet. They dumped water all over him. And a knee right up Route 1 connects. Oh, and a right hand! Now that was not teamed or knocked down, and it looked like it was! And here comes Myrtle with that aggressive striking. It's a firefight. This is what the crowd wanted. This is what Jiraiya wanted. And this is exactly what we expected. Here's Myrtle coming. And that's the that's what's cre that's crazy about Myrtle. Just when you think he's out, he keeps coming, but another right hand. Oh boy, he may not get up! Let's see! Seven, 
Alberto standing up like it's over. But it may be soon. A chance here, a knee, a right hand, left. Let's see if he can finish it. The Predator in his hometown. Jariah is still standing somehow. Great, great. Good. Jariah's eyes still look dazed. But he's throwing haymakers at the same time. This may be over soon. And it is over. Myrtle Grunhardt promises he earned his respect from Jariah tonight, and he did it. Yeah, he came out in that second round with a point to prove. He came out with aggressive hands, and he finally got that finish he called for. And there's Haru Gregorian who shakes his head. He's the champ, but you know that Grunhardt wants that title shot next. crowd giving Myrtle a lot of love in the corners, but this is the end here. Caught him with a right hand, which I thought was a knockdown, but Myrtle knew he had to come in pressure. You see him really swinging his hands. Jariah kind of dipping his head, throwing whatever he has, but there's that knee. Mariah, Jariah tries to counter, but here comes Myrtle with that aggressive, unorthodox style striking and finally got that right hand. I tell you what, Jariah showing a lot of heart to get up from that knockdown. Yeah, Myrtle knew Jiraiya was swinging those big wild punches, so Myrtle beat him to the punch. That gave him that finish. There's the left hook as he steps outside. Right uppercut, boom. That's your finish. Paul Nichols right there saw enough. You can see Jiraiya's eyes, and that's when he stepped in to call the fight. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you watched it as it happened. Our referee, Paul Nichols, steps in and calls a halt to this contest with an official time of one minute and five seconds of that second round, declaring a winner by a technical knockout, Myrtle Grunhardt! The much-anticipated welterweight clash did not disappoint as Myrtle Grunhardt made a statement that he is ready for another title shot. Next, the light heavyweight stepped into the ring for a rematch from Glory 41 Holland when 6th-ranked Michael Dute took on 7th-ranked Morad Bouzidi. Dute likes to win early, like I said. He won a tournament in Amsterdam. Won two fights in one night. The combined time of those fights, 48 seconds. A 36-second KO and a 12-second KO. And this first fight was a DQ, and it came from Dute clinching and trying to land a head because he got cut. So I feel this is where I said Dude should try to stay patient, and then when he's ready to explode, let those power hands go. Where Buziti's going to be a little bit more technical, keep a high guard defense, and one of his favorite combinations you'll see is the left hand right low kick. The big Achilles heel for Michael Duke, Joe, has been his defense and perhaps his chin. How does he overcome that against a heavy-handed guy like Buziti? Well, it's trying to stay patient. He can't just come in there with reckless abandonment. He needs to stay tight. But that's all he does, Joe. Chat. But if he wants to stay patient and he wants to get hit less, that's the strategy. There's that low kick from Buzidi. This already a better fight than their first affair, which is really ugly, as Joe mentioned. Break. Dute was disqualified after Which multiple hits. points Break. taken for holding and clinching. And, and the cut happened because, as you can see, Buzidi has a high guard defense. So when Dute tries to dip his head to get some boxing on the inside, he clipped the elbow of Buzidi. And you'll see Buzidi, every time Dute comes in, his hands and elbows are high, just like that. Break. That's where that cut happened. Break. And that threw Dude off right away. Just missing with that left hook is Dute. He goes right in again for Buzidi. And Dude's biggest complaint in the first fight was, listen, Buzidi's holding as much as I am. Yeah, Buzidi's a veteran, so he knows when Dude comes in, he's very dangerous. So that's when he ties him up. Dude thinks he's got Buzidi hurt here. His corner screaming for him to attack. Break! You can see Buziti's not backing up. He's going to come forward with his high guard. A couple body kicks that dude just shakes off. He's waiting to land the right hand. Yep, southpaw now for Buziti. Mixes that straight left to knee. 
Fight! Right back into the line of fire goes Michael Duke. Duke started fighting when he was just 10 years old. Got beat up by a kid walking home from school. Cried to daddy. Daddy said, no crying. I'm taking you to the gym, and you're going to go fight that kid again. And that's what happened. Duke knocked the kid out and decided to stick with it. Uzidi's really liking his self-paw self stance. Mixing in that left kick and left straight. So Michael Duke, who made his debut over five years ago in London, looking for his sixth win here, but he's going to have to get this third round for sure. Break! I won't be surprised Break. if it's split again. So there it is, a split round, three to two for Buzidi. But different judges gave it to different people. Yeah, right now it's two for Buzidi, one Break. for Duke. Break. But if my math is correct, Break. he can still win this round. If he wins this round, he can still win the fight. Yeah, absolutely. So it's all to be had here. And another collision with the head there, and Duke complains. Fight. And you can see every time Duke Break. starts to throw a combination, Buzidi basically lunges into his body. And you see those body kicks from Buzidi, and they're all coming from that self-paw stance. Keeps throwing that left kick over and over again. But I really like those low kicks from Duke, followed with his hands. Oh, Buzidi hurt. Yeah, the legs are, are wobbly here. The crowd starting to rumble. They sense it now. Yeah, that just, right hand stumbled him again. He's Duke, still on his feet, though. Dude, now. Goes a knockout can change everything here. Duke's right? got a smile on his face. He's coming forward. Boy, Buzidi staying upright. Nice body to head work from Duke. Buzidi's got to win this round, too. Good body shot with an uppercut there from Michael Duke. Break. Break. The Dream Crusher seeking his 20th knockout. Break! And Buzidi can't simply just hold on here, Joe. No, nope, he needs the pressure. Maybe go back to his southpaw stance, but he's getting caught in the Duke fight. Duke forces you to fight like this. Break! Break! A minute to go here in the third and final round. Buzidi was hurt, but did not Break. go down. Break. Has to figure out a way to turn the momentum here. Break. Fight. My voting. Fight. Good Break. pressure from this round from Duke. No holding, fight! Break! What can Buzini no find? Fight. He's got to dig, dig deep here. It's been all Michael Toot here in the third round. Break! Break! Fight! Buzini's still out, just like Juan Manuel Marquez did to Manny Pacquiao. A one-hitter quitter for the Dream Crusher. And once he hit it, Buzini fell face forward. Man, that power in Michael Dude's hands. Wait till you see the replay. Buzini's head was just dangling over the edge of the bottom rope. Watch this. Yeah, Dude was getting really the best in this round. We saw Buzini come forward trying to get some offense, and that's when Dude was able to catch him. Let's see it from a closer look. Counter left hook right over the top. Perfect timing, the way he torqued his body into that hook. And then he followed with that right hand to seal the deal. What power in Michael Dude's hand. Buzini was out after the left hook. The right hand really didn't mean much. Look at his body. Just yeah. goes completely limp, and then it just dangles down and falls right over the edge. Definitely a highlight in Michael Dude's career. He wanted win number 20, or knockout number 20, rather, and he got it. And how? A knockout with just seconds to go in this bout. 
Ladies and gentlemen, you watched it as it happened. The end comes just four seconds short of the bell. Officially, two minutes, 56 seconds of that third and final round and ends by knockout. For your winner, Michael Dude. Already ahead on points, Michael Dude put an exclamation point by knocking out Buziti with only seconds left in the contest. When we return, we highlight two of the best lightweights in the world. And don't blink when heavyweights Jamal Ben Sadiq and D'Angelo Marshall take to the glory ring for one of the fights of the night. Don't go anywhere. Glory 59 Rewind will be right back. Welcome back to Rewind. With both of these top contenders recently coming off losses to current lightweight champion Sidichai, this pivotal match would determine who's next in line for a potential title rematch. Baya is chomping at the bit to get after Bestani. Highlights now from this lightweight clash, which was extremely close. Yeah, very close and a very technical fight. And I think whoever loses this fight is going to think they won, and it's going to be very controversial. And I guarantee both are really young, and we'll see it again. But first round, Baya really used his kicks, but Tajani using his long reach, trying to get his knees. But every time Baya hits you, he creates damage. And that's what the judges were scoring, especially in that second round. And it came up to this third round where Tajani looked like he was the more active, but Baya was pressuring, trying to land his power. So were the judges looking for the power or the volume? Ladies and gentlemen, this bout goes the distance, so we go to the judges' scorecard. Let's take a look at the totals. They score this bout 29-28, Bestati. 29-28, Baya. And our three remaining judges also score the bout 29-28 for your winner by split decision, Tejani Bestati. Bastani managed to squeak out the split decision, moving one step closer to a lightweight title shot. Next, in a heavyweight clash, the Goliath, seventh-ranked Jamal Ben Sadiq stepped in against third-ranked D'Angelo Marshall. And look at Goliath, he's ready to go, Joe. Right in the middle of the ring, they're both gonna taste it. Here we go, this could be over in a few seconds. Ring the bell, let's go! Fight. Let the animals out! Need I tell you, the Goliath in the black gloves, D'Angelo Marshall, who got a pretty big ovation in the white. Yeah, ready, you can try, you see. Oh, oh, that's a knockdown. The Goliath with a quick knockdown. Marshall looking around, I think he's okay. Five, six, Yeah, Marshall's trying to stay close to Sadiq to shut his power down. But he ate some punches coming in. He ate another one. Look at the Goliath. Bombs away. And another knockdown. One more and it's over. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Gloves up. Fight. Here comes Goliath again. He promised us this would be his best performance ever after a lackluster fight against Jafar Wilness. And D'Angelo Marshall needs to stay patient, not just open up like this. And that's it. That's it. It is over. Jamal Ben Sadiq. That positivity from his results definitely showed. He came in, he looked hungry, and he came right after D'Angelo with those punches. My word, Joe. The beast has awoken inside this man again. Yeah, absolutely. We see a new spark and a new fire in Jamal Ben Sadiq. Yeah, let's take a look at how all of this action started. It was D'Angelo Marshall really trying to close the distance, which is a good strategy, but you you got to be smart about it. Here it comes as he's trying to walk in. Jamal Ben Sadiq throws his straight punches. And D'Angelo Marshall's just opening up a little too much versus those straight punches. And that's all your, that was the first knockdown. And Sadiq just looked good. He just got in there, got aggressive. But D'Angelo Marshall, instead of trying to move, he wanted to really go out there and, and show that he can put the big Sadiq out. But Here's the third knockdown, coming from a right hand. 
set up, and you see D'Angelo backing up. So you see that big wide punches, and that was the mistake that D'Angelo made. Looping his punches too wide, where Jamal Ben Sadiq decided to stay with his straight punches and got the TKO win. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout comes to an end by way of the glory maximum knockdown rule with an official time of 57 seconds of that very first round and ends by technical knockout. For your winner, Jamal Ben Sadi. In the blink of an eye, Marshall suffered a first round TKO at the hands of Ben Sadiq, who with the victory moved to number two in the heavyweight rankings, while Marshall falls to seventh. Up next, title fights in the featherweight and heavyweight divisions. You don't want to go anywhere. Glory 59 Rewind will be right back. Welcome back to Rewind. The first of two title fights at Glory 59 Amsterdam featured a rematch and title unification bout between interim champion Pit Panarun Kiap Mukau of Thailand and Glory's only two division champion, Robin Van Roosmalen. Dutch style versus Thai style. Punches versus kicks. The professor versus poker face. Five rounds, featherweight division. Here we go. Joe, what will set the tone early in this fight? Well, you're going to see something like that. I was going to say it's the left kicks of Pep Panamarung. And the controversy is, is the arm kicks, just like that. Do they score in kickboxing? Van Roosmalen says no. Muay Thai's stylists will say yes. Robin Van Roosmalen, a usual slow starter, has been known to give away the first round sometimes too, but then he turns it on. Let's see how he does here tonight. Yeah, he's got that slow pressure that slowly grinds you down as the fight goes on. But so does Pep Penmerung. Those kicks to the arms, the body, the inside low kicks, those all add up as well. And remember, Thai fighters are used to five round fights, so this isn't something new for Pep. Well, that front push kick is pretty paying dividends for Petch Panamarung. And I know I say it a lot, but the nickname for Pet Panamarung is Pet. His team and his trainers all call it, so you'll see Todd and I use it once in a while. Cap Mukau said he started training for Muay Thai when he was a baby. He said, it's all I've ever known. It's all I've ever loved, but he loves kickboxing now that he's made the transition. He's been a fighter his whole life and calls tonight, if he wins, the crowning achievement of his career. And it has to be fun for him fighting Muay Thai for so many years and giving him a new look and a new challenge with his improved boxing is probably something fun for him. In his last fight, it was a close, controversial decision that Van Roosman beat Petch Panmarong. And Petch went to the drawing board and said, listen, I can't fight going backwards anymore. I've got to fight going forwards, and he's done it every fight since. Can he afford to do it tonight, though? Well, it's going to be really hard against Van Roosman because you see that high guard defense, and he's very durable. Probably one of the most durable fighters in glory. He can take a lot of punishment off of his defense on his body. He'll, he'll take one to give two. What about take two to give one, Joe? <laughs> there you go. Well, there's that high kick. Blocked nicely, though, by Van Roosmalen. But Pet keeps coming back, countering, trying to stay busy. Adrian Sheed told us that's the trainer for Petch. He's in the best shape of his life. We hear trainers say that all the time, but he said, listen, guys, I'm telling you right now, he is in incredible condition. Yeah, they did a lot of focus on his strength and conditioning, so he says his left kick is just getting more and more powerful. Just ask Zakaria Zugari or Esbiri what that head kick feels like. Those high kicks were set up with level changes of the left kick, so that's why you're seeing Pet go inside leg, back leg, and body. So changing levels with the left kick will help that high kick finish if you can find it. Already a welt on the rib cage of Van Roosma. As he continues to walk forward and pressure. Uh -huh. Good round for the Thai fighter who landed 30 strikes compared to 12 for the Dutch fighter. Back. Round two scheduled for five, and all five judges give it to Petch. You can see those inside low kicks for Pet going over and over again. 
He'll go left kick to the body, inside low kick. Break, step back. A lot of Thai fighters have trouble defending with their hands and boxing. How do you think Petch is doing? Yeah, Petch does it by closing range. He's not just going to stand in head-to-head -head range. That's where it's dangerous there, where he can get caught. So you see, like you just, Rage like I mentioned, he closes distance right away, and that shuts down Ben Roosmullen's boxing. Stay long or stay in. Don't stay in mid-range boxing. That's the Thai style. Breaks the back. As expected, Van Roosman losing round one. But he never gets never gets deterred, never slows down, just keeps Rick. sticking to his game plan, and it always seems to work out for him. Yeah, but what Pet Pen Penrun's doing is he's staying busy off of Van Roosmullen's guard, and by continually kicking and punching the arm, it's harder for Van Roosmullen to open up. Does it seem a little weird to you? Of course, Van Roosmullen puts on a lot more weight. He's the bigger guy in there right now, but Pet seems to be muscling him around a little bit. Yeah, it's just that activity and his power and his kicks and his ability to control and manage range. Even those push kicks like that one, and when they get close together, Petch just shoving him away. Yeah, ben Roos Mullen, in order to steal these rounds, needs to put more combinations together. He's walking, he's defending well, but he's also not putting as much output. I asked Ben Roos Mullen how concerned he was about taking one of those high kicks. He Great said, I'm not at all because I always keep my glove up. He can hit me in the body if he wants, but he's not going to get me in the head. And, and that canvas has to be slippery because every time you see Van Roosmallen take a push kick, his feet slide like he's on skates. Try to watch his feet when those push kicks come. You can see that little slip and slide. First knee we've seen, I think. Yeah, good style for Pet is uh, uh, long kicks on the outside, and as Van Roosmallen comes in to counter, he mixes his knees. Nice uppercut landed there for Van Roosmallen. 30 seconds to go here in round two. Yeah, there's that slipping we're talking about, Joe. Yeah, even Pet slipped there trying to counter. Wearing those ankle supporters, would that help you with that cloth underneath your foot? Well, I, in my opinion, it'll probably make your feet more slippery especially as it gets wet. But if you got some dry feet, if you're not moisturizing them, that'll really <laughs> make your feet extra slippery. So you'll see a lot of fighters uh, spill water on the canvas and get their feet wet in between these rounds. Here we go, round four. These are the championship rounds. There's some urgency from Van Roosmallen. You hear his corner yelling, let's work. Break, step back. Ben Rusman still trying to find his rhythm. Get, get his timing down here. It's been awkward so far for him. Break, step back. Be careful. We'll see the judges' scorecards in a minute. What a pivotal round three that was. I do like when Ben Rusman encounters the left kick with Break, his right inside back. low kick. I know he's been re heavily relying on punches versus the kicks, but I think countering with his kicks can be a, a better strategy. And we've got a cut yeah. now. Looks on the forehead of Ray. Van Roosmallen. Right. Good combination there for Van Roosmallen. Yeah, definitely better. They landed a nice stiff jab as well. Pet can't get carried away. He needs to stick Ray. to his Stay game back. plan. He doesn't want to sit in head-to-head -head and, and, and fight Van Roosmallen in a boxing fight. Stay long, use your kicks. But maybe the, the pressure of, of Van Roosmallen starting to pay. Right now, Van, or rather, Rich Penron with his hands down. Do not want to do that against Van Roosmallen. Van Roosmallen's dad in the corner. Van Roosmallen's dad actually beat Vladimir Klitschko in a kickboxing fight many moons ago. Great. Step back. An experienced kickboxing family. Van Roosmallen from the south of the country, Den Bosch. Great. Said he actually fought in this arena one time, a B-class fight when he was 17 years old. This is his second fight in the arena. And co-main eventing as well. He has never been knocked out. Rick. 
47 professional fights, never stopped. Yeah, definitely super durable. He's really hard Great. to hurt. And a lot of people come in with all these tricky game plans, but that pressure tends to break most guys down. Another body kick there from the very busy Pech Panamaro. Great. We're having an issue with our graphics right now, but I can't tell you the judges all gave it to Petch Panamaron. Round three, five judges. Therefore, Van Roosmalen needs a knockdown here, or he will lose this, this fight. Yeah, he needs a little bit more urgency, and we're seeing it in this round. Is Pet slowing down, or is Robin picking up? A little bit of both. Darn! Round four, just one to go. Here we go, three minutes left. Van Roosmalen, one of the best fighters Glory has ever seen. Needs one of the best finishes we've ever seen from him. Yeah, and this is his 20th fight, so he's got a push. Looks like a, a sweep for Kiat Mukau. A dominating performance by Petch Panamaron. Look at those scores. It's not even close, Joe. No, I mean, he really wanted to put a stamp on it. The first fight was way too close. It was a split decision win for Van Roosmalen. And he's just improved so much. And he promised he was going to come forward more, be more Great. active, and he did just that. Total kicks landed 82 to 29. And he was especially worried being in Holland that the, fan, uh, the judges would value that pressure fighting in the Dutch style. So he really put on a game plan Great. that really showed you know, his worth in kickboxing rules. So if you know you're ahead like Kiet Mukau is, four rounds to none, what's your strategy here over the last, next two minutes? Well, just to continue to control distance. Stay long or stay inside. Don't take any risks on the head-to-head -head range. Stay long or stay in, just like that. Make Van Roosmalen come to you. There's a large television audience right now in Thailand cheering on Petch Panamaron, who grew up dirt poor in the Burnham right. province. Fought basically to feed his family. His older siblings, his parents, became a champion as a teenager in that country, decided to expand his horizons, change his game, become a kickboxer, and he has mastered his craft already, Joe, through nine fights, and could very well tonight become the new featherweight champion of the world. And it's so impressive to be only 23 years old to do it. This has to put Great. him as our Great. youngest champion. Van Roosmalen, though, still in this fight. Right. Landed that right hand on the inside. Just over 30 seconds to go. Yeah, he looked for a right hook, right uppercut there. Great. With a win tonight, Petch would become our second Thai champion currently. We have two Brazilian champions with a chance to have a third tonight in our heavyweight championship match. Truly a global sport right. is glory kickboxing. Ten seconds to go, and it looks like we won't really have a last stand for Robin Van Roosmalen. A master class, a changing of the guard for Petch Penarog, Kiat Mukau. Okay, let's take a look at some of these highlights from these, this fight, and a lot of the highlights are going to come from Petch Penarog, Kiat Mukau, who really used that southpaw Muay Thai base to really use a lot of left kicks and a lot of good activity. We saw him come use his boxing, Get some good knees and kicks on the inside. Van Roosmalen was pressuring, but just really couldn't get his offense going. He was pushing, but Kiat Mukau is just so good with that range and distance control where he stays long, blasts that left kick, blasts those front kicks, and on the inside, he really ties you up and mixes his knees in. So very impressive fight for Pet Panamurg, and he promised to keep coming forward. So I wonder what Van Roosmalen was thinking in this fight. Ladies and gentlemen, after five championship rounds, we go to the judges' scorecard. Here now are the totals. All five of our ringside judges see them out 
and score them out the same 50-45, a unanimous decision, all for your winner and new Glory Featherweight Champion of the World, Pantanam Rukiat Mukau. Here to present the belt, our Managing Director of Sport, Mr. Cor Hammers, and Glory Co-Founder, Scott Rudman. In dominating fashion, Pet Panamroong becomes the second fighter out of Thailand to hold a glory title as the new featherweight champion. When we come back, the king of kickboxing, Rico Verhoeven, puts his belt on the line for the eighth time against Brazilian beast, Guto Inocente. Don't go away. Rewind. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to Rewind. Glory 59's main event was a title fight between two of the best heavyweight kickboxers on the planet. Guto Inocente, bringing a wild thug kickboxing style out of Brazil, and the king of kickboxing, Rico Verhoeven, defending his title for the eighth time. Guto Inocente's judge, judge, timekeeper. Challenge is this, Joe. Stop the unstoppable, beat the unbeatable. Perhaps the most Fight. dominant kickboxer Glory's ever seen. And it's for the heavyweight championship of the world. Five rounds. And right away, you see Rico Fight. wanting to pressure. And that pressure is going to slow down the Fight. movement and the kicking of Innocent. That's why Rico's staying close. If gudo has got space, that's where he can mix in those spin kicks. Conventional wisdom fight. says if Guto wins this fight, it's got to be by an early knockout. We've seen him in the past fatigue late in fights. Yeah, he says he's prepared really hard on his conditioning. Fight. So we'll see if that pays fight. off. But Guto's one of those fighters that if he has you hurt, he's going in for the finish, whether it means emptying the tank or not. He's never been five rounds in glory before. Spinning back fist there from Guto. Look at the tree trunk legs on Rico Verhoeven. That low kick didn't phase him. Yeah, right away you're going to see Rico really trying to utilize his pressure in low kicks. Good low kicks will slow down the movement of Gudo, also shut down the kicking. We saw Jamal Vincity get Rico into a little bit of trouble in round one. That gives Guto and other fighters hope they can do the same. Break! Rico playing with stance switches as he's walking forward. I know that's something they've been working on. Being able to go southpaw, throw a few strikes from there. And how hard is it for Guto to stay patient, stay breathing, not get fatigued, not get too worn down around? Him? Well, it's tough because Rico's pressuring, and that's what Rico said in his pre-fight interview. He's like, a lot of people think they can go five rounds, but until you step in the ring with me, you have no idea how brutal that pressure is. Rico gets better as the fight progresses, usually. Guto seems to fade away. You already see those Verhoeven low kicks. Break. Guto bought a custom mouthpiece that he's wearing Break. right now that says, and new. He'd love to hear Tim Hughes say that tonight. It would change his life forever. But right now, Rico doing what he does, Joe. Yeah, and it's strong basics. You see good, strong defense. Everything good with good technique. Dennis Crowell from Super Pro really focuses on the basics. It's not about spinning and doing all this crazy things. Strong basics have made has made Rico so dominant. Break. This is the eighth title defense for Rico Verhoeven. And really, no one's come close to beating him, Joe. Let's be honest, except for maybe Sadiq in that first round. Yeah, it's you got to really catch him. You can't just sit there and throw those conventional strikes. You got to go on angles. You got to throw something, you know, offbeat. There's a lot of confidence Fight. because their styles, you know, are ideally what beats the other person. To beat Rico, you got to be spectacular with your offense. To beat Gudo, you need good basics and pressure. All five judges giving it to Rico, round one. Fight. We thought Gudo would have to pressure Rico, be right on top of him, but right now that's not happening. 
Yep, there's a nice left hook from Rico Verhoeven. Break! Break! Fight! Another spinning attempt Break. there for Guto. Fight! 13 kicks landed for Verhoeven compared to six for Innocence. Leg kicks, they're gonna add up. Guto needs to try Break. to circle out a little bit more, Break. not staying in the right in front of Rico. You know, Guto's a big guy with massive legs, but compared to Rico, he looks like a 13-year-old. Oh, nice right hand from Rico. Yeah, that's a nice right kick, right punch combination. Now, Rico's doing a lot of step attacking. You see him stepping, fainting to a southpaw. If Gudo's there, he throws his kick from a southpaw. If Gudo backs up, he'll switch stances again, go back to his orthodox, and attack with his right low kick. That's what those step attacks are working on. A safe Fight. way to close distance and create different stances. Verhoeven, 14 of 14 for leg kicks. Hasn't been checked once. Oh, good timing. When Gudo punches, Rico throws the low kick. When Gudo exits, the low kick's there. So good timing when Gudo can't block, that's when Rico throws it. Nothing really landing flush for Guto. Oh, he's throwing a little bit more in volume. It doesn't look like he has the power. Another low kick connected there beautifully for Verhoeven. And if you take the kicks away from Innocence, if his legs are beat up to the point he can't throw kicks, this fight will be over. Well, not only that, if you take the legs, it takes away his punches as well. The entire foundation is gone. Yeah, you lose the ability to kick and the ability to box, and you can't move like you did before. Rico said he wants to become the perfect fighter. He wants to be able to take what he does in the gym into a live fight, master his craft. Some would say he's mastered it already. A true martial artist will never be perfect, so. It's that journey to perfection that's keeping Rico motivated in this game. Fight! We enter the championship rounds here in Amsterdam. It's been all Rico so far. Gudo's gonna need a knockout, it's pretty clear. Again, a sweep for round three. Yeah, see, that's what I like from Gudo. You see him trying to be fancy with his footwork, trying to create some angles. Looking more like Neymar there. I think a lot, most of us expected Rico to win a decision, but can he get a finish here, I think is the big question. I think right. that's why everyone's a little quiet, right. trying to see what Rico can put together. Total strikes landed. Whoa! That, that's an illegal sweep. That's definitely an illegal sweep, but maybe Guru just needed to get Rico off his game. Public warning, next time I'll take a point. You cannot do that. You cannot do that. Over there. Over there. Yeah, you see the, the hand come around. It would have been a nice takedown, maybe a judo. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, he is a, a UFC veteran. He has two fights in the UFC, so he does have a jiu-jitsu base. Well, he needed to mix this thing up, and maybe he needed to get Verhoeven a little angry. This uh, crowd's starting to rile up. Yeah, absolutely. When Rico was walking to the neutral corner, he just stared at Gudo. So maybe Rico will open up now. Or did it wake Rico up? Another Break. low kick there. Makes Gudo stumble forward. Fight. Oh, and a knee right to the temple from Rico. Gudo didn't like it. And another low kick as the knees buckle in together. 
Oh, a left hook from Rico. And Rico's Udo trying to open it up. And go. High kick now. And Rico's opening up with his boxing a little more now. Fight. And he's mixing his high kicks. Fight. Blood trickling out of the nose of the Brazilian now. Oh, and a left and a right for Rico. Rico has a really solid overhand right. We saw that against Benjamin Attic Boy, but there's a good counter left hook. Brilliant left hook. That nice overhand right again from Verhoeven. Gudo's taking the shots though, give him that. Now he's trying and he's just spinning and doing what he can. Really showing tough heart. Mike! Gudo's never been this deep in a glory fight. He's only been three rounds. He's just made it through four Wait. against the champ. One more to go. Wait. Three minutes left here in Amsterdam. Gudo looks tired. He needs to make sure he keeps his hands defensive. Rico's opening up with his boxing. Good clean round. Rico's Wait. wife Jackie reacting pretty well there in the audience. They hug it out. Three minutes left here in Amsterdam. The heavyweight championship of the world on the line. It has been a dominating affair by Rico Verhoeven for sure. Rico, or rather Guto, has held up pretty well. Has taken a lot of damage. 121 strikes absorbed so far. Has not won a round. He's been really forced to box, and I think that it's been a different game for him because he usually gets to have his distance and his space to kick. And now he's forced to get into a boxing match. Well, Rick. boxing is where Rico excels. He's got, he got that boxing-based camp down there in the south of Holland. He's landed 17 for Verhoeven, two for Inesic. Left hook there for Rico on the exit. Rico seems to be a little bit more patient, but those counter punches seem to be the best for Rico in this round. Break. Rico glancing Break. up at the clock, see how much time is left. The answer's a minute 20. Another spinning back fist for Guto. I don't think any of them landed. Fight! He just ran out of ideas, Joe. Yeah, usually he would like to throw that spin kick, but that closer range turns it into a spinning back fist. Fight! He doesn't have the power right now to even shock Rico with anything, but landed a good right uppercut there. Fight! Guto's best moment of the fight was an illegal moment. Fight! That judo throw in round three. Crowd buzzing. They want to finish here from Rico. He's got less than a minute to do it, though. Another right uppercut from Gudo. Oh, and a high kick there for Rico. Shows you the stamina and the conditioning of Rico that he's able to throw that high kick at this stage of the game. Yeah, a lot of heavyweights say they don't like to kick too much because it's exhausting having that big weight, but Rico's almost the exact opposite. He can volume kick for five rounds, no problem. Break! Break! Ten seconds left here. Stop! And that'll do it! Gudo surprisingly goes five full rounds, but they all belong to the king, Rico Verhoeven. It was all Rico Verhoeven really pressuring, using his real strong basics to close the distance, and that was the key for him in this fight. Stay close to Gudo to shut down his kicks in a spectacular offense, and Rico really found his low kicks, staying close and finding them over and over again, and his ability to mix his low kicks. We saw him go right low kicks, left low kicks, and even change levels. Some moments of the fight, he was even able to showcase some of his boxing, but that pressure was just too much for Gudo to handle. 
He couldn't handle the inside boxing range. Here was that Ill illegal sweep that he was warned for. Woke Rico up a little bit, but that fifth round, Gudo was just trying everything he could. Spinning back fist, tried for a few good uppercuts right here, but ultimately the king with a strong defense and was able to get, again, his eighth title defense. Ladies and gentlemen, after five championship rounds, we go to the judges' scorecard. All five of our ringside judges score them out the same. 50-45, a unanimous decision for your winner. And still, glory heavyweight champion of the world, the king of kickboxing, Rico Verhoeven. With relentless pressure and tactical precision, Verhoeven cruised to a unanimous decision while extending his glory winning streak to a record 17. Up next, Glory 60 Leon, featuring the much-anticipated welterweight title fight between defending champion Haruk Gregorian and French favorite and former champion Cedric Dumbe. It happens October 20th at Glory 60 Leon for Glory's return to France. And don't forget to check out all things Glory on our website, glorykickboxing.com, or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, as well as catch up on Glory features and fights on our YouTube channel. See you next time on Glory Rewind.